and stick your glove out in the air. I'll take care of it. You've got the last golden ticket! And always keep your mouth shut. They never kept score. They never even really stopped playing the game. The square, Betty! Get the square! And 25 summers later, the guys from the Sandlot are back together. But there were only eight of them and have a whole team. So even though I wasn't in the Sandlot, I figured I could be the ninth man and just go sit in the outfield somewhere and ask them how things have been going. It's been crazy. I mean, it definitely gets you in places for, for free. <laughs> <laughs> Can't walk through a Las Vegas casino without someone yelling, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, you're yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, you mean that's the same guy? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah has aged better than the rest of us. But there they were, Scotty Smalls, Danunez, Timmy Timmons, Tommy Reapy, Bertram, Squints, and Ham. You're killing me, Smalls. And even the narrator, who is also the writer and director, David Mickey Evans. The only one missing, Benny the Jet Rodriguez. We gotta get Mike, we gotta do the documentary. Yeah. It's called Finding Benny. <laughs> is it wild to know that a lot of these MLB superstars grew up watching The Sandlot and grew up wanting to play exactly like you guys? I think it's awesome. That's the truth. They made a big impact on a lot of people's lives. And it's not just baseball stars who were Sandlot struck. This is Kevin Durant's Twitter picture. I am Kevin Durant. It's a little known fact. And uh, I'll ball you up. <laughs> but when it comes to inspiring their own kids. I showed him the movie for the first time, and uh, he's really big on Moana. Squints didn't marry Wendy Peppercorn. So little bird! But life's good, and he's got a teenager. I think she thinks I'm just a kind of a dork, so. <laughs> <laughs> but for my generation, the Sandlot defined the summer. The film was made with the same amount of love that people have for it, and it was the greatest summer of our lives. What was your favorite scene? When the treehouse blew up, that was my big moment. The scene I did where they lift me over the fence and I come face to face with the dog. It was pretty neat having stunt guys there. Right? I did my own stunts in the film. <laughs> Hurry up, daughter. It's gonna be a short game and I gotta get home for lunch. Here we go, big NBC exec up to the plate. Come on, big boy. Hold on, look at how he's choking up. Woo -hoo! That's I'm getting her. Don't be a goofus. All right, come on. Boom! The Nunez is on the plate. Jimmy Timmons on first base. Oh, you better start stealing bases, oh, no. man. Uh-oh, look at him. <laughs> I stole that one. Finally up to bat, the Sultan of Smack Talk, the king of calling it out. Oh! You got it! I'm not even gonna run. I'm not even gonna run. Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, five lucky kids score golden tickets. Hey, you got it! You got the last golden ticket! The kids found the last golden ticket! You're always making things difficult. Blindly signing a contract to enter a life-size magical candy land. You're always making things difficult. <laughs> Today, those kids are all grown up, but still feel lucky because 44 years later, they're still in touch. We think of ourselves as a family, maybe a bit of a dysfunctional family, but, uh, but a family, really. Part of the family, Rusty Goff. I don't like the look of it. Oompa, Loompa. One of Wonka's infamous Oompa Loompas. It's scary for me because when we made the movie, they were kids. Now look at this. <laughs> yeah. And now your grandpa. <laughs> Thank you so much indeed. <laughs> Let's turn back time. Paris Themen plays the boisterous Mike TV. Can't you shut up? I'm busy. Michael Bolner gives us the gluttonous Augustus Gloop. Hungry. Julie Don Cole was the ultimate spoiled brat, Veruca Salt. I want it now! Was that a tough character to play? Was it a fun character to play? It's fun to be bad and to be encouraged to be bad. You know, usually your, your, your parents are telling you, don't do this, don't do that. And we had Mel Stewart, our director, saying, be meaner, be meaner, be meaner. Denise Nickerson starred as the gum-loving Violet Beauregard. Now, this piece of gum here is one that I've been chewing on for three months solid. Did you get sick of chewing the gum ever? No, I was having a ball. Do you still chew gum? No. <laughs> when did you give it up? Uh, when I returned and had 13 cavities. <laughs> and then there's Peter Ostrom, a.k.a. Charlie, the young boy who captures our hearts. Charlie Bucket. Well, After the movie, Ostrom shied away from the limelight, growing up to become a veterinarian. 
everybody could be so lucky to have an experience like this and then to go in a completely you know, different direction. Among the cast's favorite memories, working with the larger-than-life actor Gene Wilder. Five kids clambering all over you, wanting his attention. There was never any, you know, please don't bother Mr. Wilder. And we must have been pretty tiresome. We must have been. They were. <laughs> Show of hands, if given the opportunity, how many of you would do it again? <laughs> Unanimous. Absolutely. Sure. Time of your life? Yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, we are the fortunate ones. We're here. We got to really see it and experience it. And the first thing people do when they find out who we are is they smile. We call it the Wonka effect when you, you know, things are a little bit grim or something, and then people go, oh, and the face lights up. Yeah, smile won't well, hurt us. Whoops. So let's raise a glass of fizzy lifting drink to the Wonka effect. I'm a rocket! Cheers, Michael Charlie. Cheers, <laughs> The product of a world of imagination that still lives on. For today, Joe Fryer, NBC News, Orlando. Go right on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. I had no idea how the movie would turn out. I mean, it was a great experience and all that, but you never know what the what the impression is, is it's going to make on on people. When did you realize that, that it was going to be what it became? Today. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think this film has resonated with so many for so long? It's good. <laughs> it's, just a good it's just a good movie. You're finding out and learning about this lifestyle that, that thank God, 99% of us don't know about. Mobster films started with, yeah, see, I'm no Caesar, see? You know, this is a different kind of movie. This is not mythic. This is actual. What do you do? What? What do you do? I'm in construction. Meanwhile, Leota, who had only done three films at the time, lobbied director Martin Scorsese for nearly a year to land the part and got a little help from De Niro. I recommended Rice and Martin. Yeah, I remember see hearing that at and a party. And so, Thanks, Bob. That's a, so, um, Did you recommend me? <laughs> <laughs> for you, this was, is it safe to say this was a career maker? Absolutely. Well, I got to work with the best of the best. Everybody wanted to be nice to him, and he knew how to handle it. How did you guys achieve that chemistry that you had on screen? Well... They saw a shrink and they worked together. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he's easy to love. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at Ray playing footsies with me on the ah, table. Ah, ah. <laughs> Trying to rekindle that chemistry. Yeah. 25 years yeah. later. Lorraine, when folks walk up to you on the street, what's, what's the line? Karen, that's all we got. That's all we had. Is that it? Yeah, I hear yeah. Karen. <laughs> Close. Karen! Yes, that's right. They were in everything! That's all the money that we had, Karen. I was dependent on that. Why did you do that? Think of the one with, with Lorraine where I'm calling her down the street. That wants to <laughs> kill me. Wants yeah. off the door. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's over there, right there. No, See, there's there. so it's over there. Yeah. I have to say, my favorite scene is the one with uh, with the boys when they go to uh, see Marty's mother. I need this knife. I'm gonna take this. It's okay. Okay, yeah. I just need to bring it off. back, though. You know. They have love and respect for her, and and uh, engage her in the the dog painting. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I like this one. The dog, one dog goes one way, and the other dog goes the other way. One is going east, and the other one is going west. So what? Then there's that so, one you know, the funny the scene. But well, I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. We were at rehearsal, and Joe was telling a story about it. Actually, a situation like that happened to him. And that's basically all it is. And Marty said, "All right, all right. Like, how do you think it would go?" And then we like improv it a little. <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> People come up to me every day, every day, I swear to you, and tell me it's their favorite movie. And it's on every day somewhere. So it touched uh, a chord in everyone. It is on every day because I haven't been getting any residual. <laughs>